Hey everyone, welcome to another video by AppSec Engineer. This video is actually one of the labs in our Attacking and Defending Containers course on AppSec Engineer. So in this lab video, I'm going to be trojanizing a Docker image with a tool called Docker Scan. Once this Docker image is trojanized and when a victim actually runs this trojanized image as a Docker container on their host machine, as an attacker, I'll be able to gain complete control over that particular container runtime and I might also be able to break out of the container runtime and gain complete control over the victim's host machine. If this is the sort of content you'd like and enjoy, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and also like the video. We're also active on LinkedIn and Twitter where we're going to be constantly posting updates around Kubernetes security, cloud security, AppSec, DevSecOps, and a whole lot more. Hi everyone. In this lab video, we're going to go ahead and trojanize Docker images. So we're going to use an open source tool called Docker Scan to trojanize our Docker images. One of the other features of Docker Scan is that it can scan Docker registries as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our lab. So first we're going to pull the latest version of the Wolf Flask Docker image. So this is the image that we want to trojanize. And then we're going to save the entire file system of this Docker image to a file called v 45 flask So now it's going to pull the latest version of this image and save it to a file. So now that we're done saving the Docker image to a file, when we list it out, it's going to tell us that we have the v 45 val underscore flask file that has been created. So now using Docker scan, we're going to go ahead and trojanize this entire file. So we're going to say Docker scan image modify and we want to trojanize the v 45 val flask file. And we're going to give it the listener IP, which is going to be our server IP. And the listener port is going to be 1337. And this trojanized file is going to be written to another file called v 45 val flask trojanized. So now that the v 45 val flask uh, image has been trojanized, uh, it is now saved to a file. So when we list out all the files, we should have the trojanized version of this particular Docker image as well, and it's saved as a tar file. So now what we have to do is we have to load this particular tar file into our Docker image. So now we're going to go ahead and load this trojanized tar file into our Docker images. So one other thing that I forgot to mention was that Docker scan also gives you a listener command that you can run on the machine for you to listen on. So whenever this particular trojanized Docker image is run as a container, the attacker would essentially get complete reverse shell access to the container instance. So now let's go ahead and load this particular Docker image. And once it's done, we can list out all the images that are available on our lab instance. It is now going to tell you that there are two versions of the Valve Flask image. And one above is the latest version, which is actually the trojanized version of the Docker image. Now, one interesting feature about this tool is that it is not going to modify the created on date, right? So even if an attacker gains access to a Docker image, trojanizes it and pushes it back, or if somebody else is using the same trojanized Docker image, they will not be able to see the modified contents, even though this particular Docker image has been trojanized. So now let's go ahead and run this particular uh, Docker image that has been trojanized. But before we do that, we also have to set up a listener. So now we need to set up a reverse shell for us to be able to access the trojanized container whenever it's being run. So for that, let's open up a new terminal and run our netcat command. So we're going to run our netcat command and uh, we're going to run it on port 1337 for it to listen on. So now let's go ahead and launch our trojanized Docker container. Now we're going to go ahead and run our vulnerable flask image uh, that is on our host machine. But this image is trojanized. So as soon as we run it, uh, our attacker listener or the listener netcat that we have right here should get reverse shell access. From our reverse shell, we can start listing out all the contents of this particular container. And we'll also have complete access to the source code as well. So we can access the Etsy uh, password and Etsy shadow of the container. 
So this is just an example of trojanizing a Docker image. An attacker could potentially trojanize something like a MySQL database Docker image and push it onto a public registry. So whenever a victim pulls that particular trojanized Docker image and runs it and starts saving all their data into the database, the attacker essentially has reverse shell access to trojanized database and they can start stealing all the data inside the database as well. So trojanizing Docker uh, images and using these Docker images can be extremely dangerous. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and like the video. And don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for this sort of content and updates. If you're looking to learn more about cloud native security, Kubernetes security, DevSecOps, AppSec automation, threat modeling, and a whole lot more, Go get a subscription for amazing courses and a ton of hands-on labs on appsecengineer.com.